Hey guys, how's it going? This is David from Comment RDW here, and I'm here in Anime Magic in Rosemont, Illinois, with Yaya, Yaya Hi. Han, what I like to consider the queen of cosplay, basically. Is, is that, that, title, that title pops up a lot. It yeah. took many years for me to just be like, I'll tolerate it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's like I'll, I'll be humble about it, but... No. Like, yeah. it's, I, just, I don't like superlatives, but it's mm -hmm. like, I just, I can't get away from it, so it's like, all right, fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> like when you've been in the game for so long, it's like, yeah. like, for instance, I've been going to conventions since, like, 2009, and I'm old, um, I've been keeping tabs on cosplay and stuff since I started going to conventions, and you've just been around doing your thing ever since then, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I started in 1999, 10 yeah. years before you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, so we are in uh, 2022. This is my second time in Anime Magic. I've actually done uh, videos and interviews from the first Anime Magic back in 2019, the year before the fall. Um, so um, it's actually really interesting now uh, for me, for example. Like a lot of things I was, to, I was doing on my YouTube channel was uh, traveling, going to conventions, like really heavy um, before 2020. And then after that happened, basically. Um, on and travel for everybody with a whole there was like a good gap here for everybody yeah um so you were you've been actually going and guesting at conventions and stuff um for a while so yeah. then when 2020 happened how did that affect you and like your craft and uh, stuff like that oh 2020 yeah i went my last convention 2020 was katsucon mm -hmm. which was in uh valentine's weekend so, in you know dc and uh it uh it was great and then like I had probably about 16 to 18 conventions already lined up. Um, my book was going to come out that year in May and um, I had like, you know, a book tour planned and, and then yeah, everything shut down and it was horrible. It's a big old wrench and everything. Yeah, yeah, so everything of mine got cancelled and um, also like the, the fact that I realized that, oh, my family is overseas so I don't know when I'll see them again. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how to make up for all the, the revenue that would have come in through selling products at conventions. Um, we made lots of face masks that year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that ended up sort of being the, the thing that people needed. And it was, uh, you know, my, my small business, three of us can sew. So I just like, you know, I had extra sewing machines. So I just distributed them and we just made a bazillion, bazillion face masks. Yeah, and I also saw your YouTube video where you were uh, basically telling people how to make them at home if they have the resources. Yeah. That too, so. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to, you know, make face masks for sale. I'm until I've shown people how I make them and also give people the opportunity to make them themselves. Yeah. You know, it was, like that was really important. And then, yeah, and then like 2021, it, um, you know, we just were able to kind of make do with the online sales, grab a small business with lots of cosplay items and such. And then, you know, we started doing conventions again in the summer of 2021 very carefully only a couple and uh so it's like and then i, I was doing like a lot of um uh social media promos for oh, gaming yeah. companies and such mm -hmm. and so it's like that's kind of like became the you know the the other revenue part just a sign yeah that. so but but i i still like i enjoy going to conventions the yeah, most. Okay. so instead of just like having to make a costume that is under NDA, so I can't tell anyone about it mm -hmm. for a month. I'm just like in a black hole of crafting, and then I post it online, and everybody goes, cool, and then that's it. Yeah. So like, I really like the experience of wearing a costume at a con, interacting with people. Yeah, because it was different when you were just making it at home, and then just doing the photo shoot, and just posting it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, how have you uh, been with cons coming back, basically? Like I know, like you said, you were working on your book. Congratulations! Thank you. Um, and you're probably going to a lot more locations. Like you said, you're also being able to do your sales and things like that too. Um, yeah, this summer was um, so good that I did six conventions in a row um, in four countries, and it was too much. <laughs> I was like, all right, I overdid it. I really overdid it. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. But like, you know, it's just kind of how these conventions. Fell, you know, it was like they were some of them I had agreed to go to before the pandemic, so it was like, like it was like blocks. fulfilling, yeah. yeah, fulfilling the obligations, and then others came up that 
I really didn't want to um, say no to. You know, one was in Germany or in Switzerland, near Germany, where my family lives. So it's like a forest. I have to go so I have a chance to see my family. And uh, but then like the physical toll that it took on me to do six shows in a row um, was a lot. So like I, I had three weeks to recoup and now I'm here. So I'm like, I'm gonna take it very easy this, this weekend. You know, it's like I have to yeah, kids even speaking on weekend. that, it's like there's a lot of conventions that I have in there, like backlog dates. So like yes. there's a lot of con overlap this year. Like this very. weekend alone, it's Anime Magic C2E2 also in Chicago. And then Crunchyroll Expo is happening. And Gen Con. Yeah. And you know, I think Otaku-thon in, in Canada. Like they're, they're really good. Like you ask one person, hey, what con are you going to this weekend? It's like, I'm going to this one. It's like, I'm going to this one. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, it is definitely, that means like we're back. I'm grateful, but I think we also like, I was like, all right, I, I overdid it. This is my limit. I know it now. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so this weekend you're going to be doing, um, you're going to be on panel for the cosplay judging for the cosplay yes well. yes so yeah. so yeah i'm doing craftsmanship judging which will take most of uh tomorrow i think um and then the contest portion is also two hours so that's my majority Busy. of my day mm -hmm. um but I'm, I'm like i really enjoy judging i i wish that i could also have a little more time at my booth to meet people mm -hmm. But it's like you, you can't, like that's, that's just how, how it goes. I need so. your, uh, your experience uh, decision on the on cosplay contest for sure, yeah. I mean, I really enjoy it. I've been judging contests since 2002. Mm -hmm. So it's been 20 years of um, seeing, seeing contestants and making objective decisions. And so it's like I, it is it's a big part of why conventions hire me and want me to be out there. So like, yeah, ready to do it. With the uh, newer cosplayers that are in the scene nowadays, like there's a lot of people that are um, doing cosplay and posting on TikTok a lot, there's a lot of people posting on Instagram, um, and there's some impressive cosplays and like works being made from people who are uh, relatively new to the cosplay yeah. like scene. Um, so someone like you, like I said, has been in, in it for a while. Um, are you seeing like any improvements or any differences in the newer cosplayers where it's like, they're more ambitious than you would have thought they would be with like the things that they're making, or it seems like um, since there's so many resources available now, people can be more creative with like their builds and stuff like that. Yeah, I think the standards has raised, you know, overall, and uh, it is a it's, it, it's a very natural development from more resources, but also more educational materials being out there. Mm -hmm. Like people are really openly sharing um, all their crafting secrets and methods and then you you know we have more high quality materials available that you know i'm a part of that i guess uh that harsh portion where i'm like making patterns and fabrics and trims and eda foam and stuff like that for mass retail so more people can easily access access these materials so yeah it's it's uh really impressive what people are able to make sometimes as their first costumes. Um, it really just like it, there's like no no right way or wrong way to cosplay. I think it's, it's just like whatever people want to uh, focus on and the freedom is really great mm -hmm. and um, I also often Think about like what it's like for these newcomers to want to stand out amongst you know really saturated market and what how I could help them you know sort of find their footing and uh, if they want to do this as a profession especially so like I'm today I'm doing a panel at five about cosplay as a business and answering questions about like the different ways that you can make cosplay a profession. Um, because it, it's like this is a new enough industry that there aren't any hard guidelines mm -hmm. and so I think uh, if anything you have a lot of talented and really passionate people that don't quite know how to be successful with it. So. Yeah. Um, and then one last thing I want to ask you um, since it's been like since 2020 basically everyone's had a lot more time to binge and watch your things and read things or indulge in media and things like that. So like, what is something that you've been um, watching or reading or 
um, indulging in, in terms of like TV shows, Netflix, anything like that, anime? I uh, definitely have watched a lot of anime in the mm -hmm. last couple of years. I just in general have found myself wanting to consume way more Eastern media. Honestly, I think I think that's like before the pandemic, I didn't really notice, but I was like, I'm spending like I grew up in in Germany. I moved here when I was still fairly young, and I'm like, all I'm doing is just consuming Western media. It's all these characters that I have no relations to. You know, mm -hmm. everybody was like, Bridgerton is so great. I'm like, yeah, Bridgerton is great, and they're like, yeah, we're we're gonna make costumes and go to the Bridgerton ball. I'm like. What am I going to do out of Bridgerton Ball? It's, like, it's not my culture. Yeah. It's not my history. And so I've been actually reading a lot of Chinese novels and watching Chinese sea dramas and even cosplaying from them. And um, just in general, like wanting to sort of reclaim my history and my culture more. And, you know, like that, it's just like I enjoy Eastern storytelling more than Western. I think Western storytelling is very, um, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, it's like very tropey and predictable. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got for you, Yaya. Uh, thank you so much for your time here at Anime Magic 2022. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Yay! See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.